DCM Studios. It's the Wayne Hayes Show. Yeah. Round the button, round the button, round the plot, plot, plot. It's the Wayne Hayes Show, an all new show starring me. Matter of fact, not starring me, a show where I'm coming in and giving a platform for some of the new emerging talent, business owners, influencers, your mama and them, uh, whoever I can support. If you think they should be here and their story is impactful, this is what we do at Bay Life Radio. It's all about the people. We, we for the culture and the people. I want to quickly shout out a few of our sponsors. We have Fair Game Magazine. Fair Game Magazine is for the culture, supporting everything that is culture. So we got music, talent, artists. Uh, there's a lady in here with a CPR company. There's foreign family in here. There's, oh man, it's just so many people in here. Fair Game Magazine, that's F-A-R-E-G-A-M Magazine on Instagram as well. We have Urban Zen. We have Ziminade. And we're going to talk about Ziminade. And we got Uncle Igor's Mud Water, an all-natural herbal tea. And if you were to look real close, he looked higher than a giraffe neck. So listen, you know that Igor, and, and, and my partner Igor, he is a certified weed smoker. So I know that if he has a, a beverage, it's going to have to uh, level up to his, yes sir. So that's that Uncle Igor's mud water. But with no further ado, I want to talk to this brother right here. Put your hands together for Zim Ryan. Make some noise. Can I get some applause for that? Oh, yeah. Get an applause. Yes. I got you. Uh, it's uh, Zimari. Zimari? Yeah, Zimari. Okay, my That's bad. I love everybody. You know. Zimari. Yeah, Zimari. That's how, like how, how they do it. I know that, but how did I pronounce it? Zimari. Zimari? Oh, my yeah. shit went off again. So, uh, I guess, I guess my good. family might have got me. <laughs> but, uh, Zimari. Zimran, yeah. I, now I get that all the time. I've been Zim. calling you that for a minute now. Yeah, everybody, I don't mind, honestly, but I'm like, wait, you know. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I first came to uh, Zim, Zimiran, right? Yeah, yeah. You, you don't just don't turn it into a two, a two <laughs> syllable. But yeah. I first met Zim, Zimiran. Um, I know that I found you on um, social media, but there was a certain group of people like KJ Focus and another a few few of the uh, people that are performers that be out in the outside. They be outside. Right. See, there's a lot of performers. They they're just in the studio. Yeah, studio they're just in the studio. You know what I mean? And then you, if you do see them, they're gonna be they're gonna be lip syncing. They're not gonna be uh you know saying their lyrics or playing their music without any help. You know and and some of the people that I'm mentioning, that that's not how they are. And so you be outside a lot. And I was like, whoa, who is this dude that's just as popular as the artist, but it looks like more, more popular than there. Because it would actually be a crowd around you <laughs> and the girls. <laughs> and they'll be working for you. I mean, you know, assisting you. Yeah, 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 no, that's real, that's real. And what they were assisting you was with this. Life in a jar. Life in a jar. Zemonade. Listen, how did you come up with this? Talk to me. Man, so it's a long story, but I was working at Kaiser, and I, uh, me and my, my kid's mother had split up, and money started getting a little tight. I got twin daughters, so you know, money started getting a little tight. I'm like, man, if you said some people, be like, they'll be like, Kaiser, man, you was sad. You was good. You had the job for you. You could have just stayed there, you know. But for me, I wanted more. I wanted more money. I wanted financial freedom, you know. So I just had it burning in me that I wanted to do something. I didn't know what it was. I know I sing and, and you know, I do I do production. I put uh, uh, events together. I work with artists. You know, promoter. Yeah, I do I do a whole lot of everything. Production, you said, so you make beats too? Well, I engineer. So 
my brother make beats, but I engineer artists. And I, I bring it all together. I'm like the P. Diddy, like you know, I bring this artist. And like the way you put that, yeah. You know, you put it together, and then you'll see it the whole picture. This is self thugger, man. If you watching the Wayne Haynes show? Stay tuned. Yeah, it was a rough time for sure, for sure. And, and so now you're having this rough time, but an idea pop in your mind that you should do something. That's what I heard you say. Yeah. It didn't say you should make some lemonade. Yeah, it definitely was not. I didn't know. I used to tell my brother all the time, we need to do something as simple as selling lemonade. You know, like, right. Right? I used to say that all the time. Uh -huh. And it's crazy that I sell it now. But when I quit my job, I, I first thing I was going to do was go out on the street and be singing on BART on the corner in uh, San Francisco. Like, I was really going to take it on. Like, Ooh. that's where I was going to try to make my money from, for real. Right. So I went to Costco, bought a speaker. Um, and the next day that I planned to go out, it was raining. So I was like, damn, what am I going to do? So I just... I know how to cook, so I started whipping up plates. I did, I just made like a menu, hopped on camera, made a menu, pasta, burgers. You know, it don't matter which I one. Think I think I remember made. that a little bit. When <laughs> yeah, it was like six to seven days, it lasted about yeah. seven days. Yeah. I'm about to be cooking now. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> but, um, but so literally, I, it was this pasta place that was hidden. Like people was requesting them, but it was coming in, the, the sauce was coming in jars. So I had about seven or eight jars I'm racking up on, but I'm in money mode right here. I'm like, man, I gotta make some money. Right. What I'm gonna do with these jars? I'm gonna make some strawberry lemonade. It was just strawberry lemonade at first. Right. But my babies, they love frozen blueberries. They was eating frozen blueberries. I was like, that look like both. Come on, threw it in there, froze it up, posted four of them online, and literally within an hour, I sold all of them. And that was faster than the plates. I'm like, what? Four in an hour? Oh yeah. But there was four dollars at that time. I didn't know the you know how should, how much I should sell it and none of that stuff. And how long ago was that though? That was September fifth was the first day I sold it. September fifth. Twenty nineteen, yeah. Two thousand and nineteen. Yeah, two thousand nineteen. So it's it's almost two years. Yeah, it just passed my two year anniversary just passed on the fifth. Wow. So look, man, um in a in a rough time, a hard time, obviously you looking around, you pack your pockets. He patting his pockets and he looking around to see where he can get some money. Right. And instead of patting his pockets, he started patting his head. And then an idea jumped out of there. First, it was a food idea. Yeah. You know you wanted to use it. It was a supply and demand. So you knew food is a great place. Yeah. And so you went with the food. You hit, hit, hit. Then you ended up doing a lemonade. Yeah, the food was, the food to me. You know, I know people eating in the food business, don't get me wrong, but me, I, I felt like I kept recycling the same money. Like, I was like, oh, I'm going to the store with this, you know, I was only making that right back. I'm like, damn. He wasn't making no profit. He was flipping. He was flipping, but it wasn't no, no uh, profit in it. And the goal is to buy something and have a profit margin when you exactly. make the next flip. And if you right. can make over 100%, right. Oh, yeah. you, you good. All right, so I remember I found you. And then I was like, man, I can't wait to see this brother. When I see this brother, I'm going to buy some lemonade, and some lemonade. Yeah, yeah, and then I ended up seeing you, and it was a line of people. It was a crowd of people around you. I believe we were at the lake, and I finally got my opportunity. I think we might have worked together, though. I think you, I might have seen you at a KJ video shoot or something. Uh -huh. But all I know is I got my hands on a, on a small jar, <laughs> and I hit him. <laughs> It was the truth in the booth. Man. I'm telling you, and ever since then I was I was hooked. Then what this what blew me away. In my area where I live, uh there's this little smoke shop I go to get my raw papers. You know what I mean? Don't be surprised. Yeah, medical use only. <laughs> but I was going to get my papers and I looked over there in the in the in the the beverage section where I always get my like Fiji water or something. Uh, Every now and then I might have a H2O. Uh, Shout out Burner in them. But I seen the lemonade full up the cock dog dog thing. <laughs> I'm talking about where it used to be some of this and some of these other things. They had just pushed the lemonade in there on, on the whole little space. Yeah. So I was like, well, the only reason that they would take out somebody else or move it is if this is doing numbers. And then I went over there and asked my partner, Habib. I was like, Habib, what's that? What's this? And he's like, bro, they doing numbers. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
And then I was on your page and I started seeing you. I'm like, okay, he just he got more than that spot. He over here. He in, and these are different cities. Yeah, I almost got like the major cities. I almost got a story in almost every major. Name city. the city Zillinate in. Uh, San, uh, Daly City. Daly. Pacifica. Pacifica. Uh, Walnut Creek. The Creek. Concord. Concord. Antioch. Antioch. Oakland. Oakland. Hayward. Hayward. Stockton. Stockton. Uh, no, like, it's, it, uh, it, Look, uh, I can't be oh, Sacramento. Sacramento. <laughs> Listen, let me tell you, Knucklehead, something real quick. Anytime you can have a product or um, something and find eight distribution hubs for that thing, now you don't have to be in all those places at the same time. Right. Now you also have cultivated a relationship and a rapport with the owners, and guess what that means? You can sell them something else. Say that. So that means, <laughs> yes, yeah, listen, real. man, because I that's did it real. before. Back in the days when me and Igor was rapping and doing our music, we would have to go around with to the mom and pop record store mm-hmm. and cultivate a relationship and hope they take your music and put it on their shelves. Right. And that's called consignment. Mm-hmm. And then you would go back and pick up your money. See, and that's the, that's the thing. I think people lose that connection now. They everybody just want that like that quantum leap, like the stream. Yeah, they just want it to happen overnight type of thing. But you don't even when you out there. Sometimes you don't even have a plan. You don't even know what's gonna happen. Opportunities just present themselves, and you just you just so happen to be there. Like like even with me, when it comes out to the stores. It, that was a goal. My one of my first goal was uh, you know to have a food truck. That's where where I'm really going for. It. But then you know stores approached me like boom, I want you in there. I'm like damn, listen, bro. <laughs> it's like having, different route. That, that wasn't you know having is bigger than that. It's, it's bigger. It's it's what you said mm-hmm. with some more. And this right. this is it. You dissect. You taking this. You have a distribution channel. For your exeminate, you also can be a distributor in the sense that you can pitch other folk right. product. Obviously, product that's not in competition with yours, but you can pitch it. When we used to go around to the mom and pop stores, we used to be. I used to be trying to get on a counter. I used to be trying to get somewhere where it's going to be the high traffic area. You know what I mean? Because yeah. if you make a uh, a station or something for it that's easy and user friendly, and they'll put it there. Mm-hmm. You know, but I'm just saying, bro, uh, no, that's real. that part is super dope having the distribution, and you can do that for other people. And, and if you get somebody placed, that's a big deal. You know that's, what I mean? Just like having shout, your, you say about nine stores? Store. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to them stores, like for real. Shout out to uh, all of them. But the first one, I'm going to say shout out to Ali. You feel me? He did. What city Ali in? Like, well, uh, he gorillas on smoke shop in Stockton, man. He he the one who plugged me in, man. Let me ask you a question. What what city do you live in? I ain't gonna say what city I live in. Oh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. The only reason that I ask that is because um and and, and, and I understand what you what you mean. But my point is he don't live in Stockton. <laughs> yeah, he don't live in uh Daly City, yeah. Pacifica, <laughs> right? Okay. So that means you doing the legwork, good brother. You may be doing the legwork, getting out there. He's outside with it. Yes, I'm impressed with the distribution cycle and all of that. What's my time right now? Man, we we rolling. I wanted to find Zim. Go, hey Zim, I'm gonna talk to the people real quick. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say a rap verse real quick. <laughs> Wong well, said this rap verse. Send Igor that that uh. That, yeah, that, that song real quick. It's your girl Thug Misses, and we are rocking with the Wayne Hayes Show on Daylight Radio. Yay! <laughs> Give it a shout out to my guy, man, DJ Igor B. So <laughs> 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 yeah. And for those who don't know, my guy Igor is is the forefounder of a very very important movement. It's the Don't Come to the Showcase Lip Syncing Movement. There's going to be some merch and some other things coming behind this movie. But I just want to thank Sam. I appreciate you for allowing me to be a part of that Don't Lip Sync movement. That's right. That's right. Team No Lip Sync. <laughs> Team No Lip Sync. But we back right now with my man uh, Zim- Zamiron. 
You yeah. know what I mean? Talking about his illustrious career, very short, but illustrious career around his uh his brand, his his drink that that everybody come to love in the Bay Area. It's called that Zimmer name, baby. He's in about nine stores throughout the Bay Area, and that's really really a great big deal. You know what I'm saying? But another thing that you do is you make music, right? Yeah. And and you you kept on saying it. Um, I'm not sure if this is going to be a singing song, but you just kept on saying, like, I can sing. I, I think you even said sang one time with an A. Like, I can sing. So we're going to get into some music. It ain't came yet? Okay, well, uh, how long you been doing music? Man, I've been doing music my whole life. I was raised in the church. My, both my parents were pastors. Uh, they, my mom, specifically, she uh, forced she... me to... <laughs> to lead songs and stuff like that. Okay. Me and all my brothers had to play the drum, play instrument, that whole nine. So since I can remember, really, uh, my first performance though was uh, my grandpa, my grandparents in fifty, sixty, something party, mm-hmm. and me and my brothers had to go up there and sing. And that was that was the first time I was on camera. I was five. So. <laughs> That's real big. It ain't coming through. It ain't coming through. What I what I like is that um, when there's hope, when there's not hope, or it seems that there's, there's a certain level of stagnation in one side or one thing that it is that you may be doing, you know, pat your pockets, see if you have any resources in there. If you don't, pat your heart, because you got to have heart. <laughs> if you don't have heart, you're not gonna get nothing done. And then massage your mind. You know what I mean? Because there's answers for us in them areas. You know what I mean? And um, being an artist, is, it takes guts. But being an entrepreneur, it takes tremendous guts. Um, and if you don't mind, no, no, so, so. I agree. Tell me, what bit of advice would you give someone that's just starting something and you want them to have uh, a good chance at, at success? Well, it's a couple of things I would say. One, you gotta believe in yourself. See, believe. You gotta believe in yourself. You gotta, you gotta trust, trust the process. Like, even I, I promise you, even the people who are su- super successful, who you just look at them and be like, oh, they got it all figured out. They still wake up with doubt. If they got a bad, a bad day or a bad weekend with sales or anything, they'll be like, man, is it still doing this? Is it still doing? So that's going to be there. That's natural. But you got to climb that hurdle and just keep going. Like literally do not give up for nothing and get creative. People, they just kind of want to want to take the route that everybody else did. But if you want to stand out, you got to get super creative and just do something like have courage. It might certain stuff may feel um, like cliche, corny. Yeah, corny, humiliating or or like. Man, I, what they gonna do? Like, but once you eliminate all that, because other people don't pay your bills, you pay your bills. So you gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah, you yeah. feel me? So like, it's been times where I, uh, I'm walking up with the dolly on the, I mean, with the cooler on the dolly and stuff. Yeah, it feel a little weird, but I'm like, I don't care. Right. And I think that's what people respect the most. Like they don't, they see that I'm doing what I gotta do type of thing. And, yeah, when people see a lemonade stand, they think of some kids on the corner or something like that, you know. So I got that in the beginning, but now it's a totally different thing. Like nobody is like, bro, why are you selling lemonade? They don't <laughs> ain't nobody selling that no more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I promise you, but I was getting that in the beginning. Yeah. Like, but so it so in the is. beginning, it sounds like what you said in the beginning, you may get some negative feedback or what one may perceive as negative feedback. Look, side jokes, cracks, haters. Mm-hmm. When you push in your 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 dolly with your you know your juice, yes. with your juice, yeah. but then it ain't so funny no more when you in eight stores on the shelves and all you doing is driving up this, picking yeah. up your money, huh? Yeah. <laughs> now you doing some laughing, huh? <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, and so that's the thing. Like you just gotta. I guess this book that I read called "The Slight Edge" by Jeff Olson and. He, he it's not a how to be successful book, but he tells you how you should think in order to be successful. And one of the things he tells you to do is double your failure if you want to be successful. You gotta double your failure. D- double your failure to me, that means that uh 
If you're a salesman, go out and get some more no's. Exactly. Go out and <laughs> pitch your stuff and make 10 more people tell you no. Exactly. Because behind one of them no's is a fat dog yes. <laughs> And that, and, that, and that one yes can either be the only yes you ever need, or it just gonna start the, the trajectory for a whole bunch of yeses, and that becomes discipline. You know what I mean? Uh, it's fact. It becomes uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I know I always say, um, try to do ten of anything, whatever it is that I wish to do, do ten of it consecutively. Right. So. I mean, it's going to take a whole lot of something to stop this particular uh, version of the Wayne Hayes show from not reaching 10. And by the way, we're on three right now. But guess what happens after 10, y'all? Once you reach 10 of anything, uh, the fruition starts to come through. Mm -hmm. The universe is and, the, and then also it becomes, it starts to become a habit. Mm -hmm. I think you have to do something 20 or 20 something times before it actually becomes an ingrained oh, habit. Yeah. But it's on its way at 10, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, man. Yeah, no, Did the real. music come through? We got, we're about to get into this. I just want to pick that before you yes, say that, before, um, on that word discipline, I was watching the interview of a billionaire. He was talking about the word discipline. He was saying that. People use, you know, the word discipline. Like, oh, you got to be disciplined to do this. He said, but if you just created a lifestyle, it won't be so hard on you. Like, if you, when you wake up in the morning, you got to brush your teeth, you got to take a shower, you, those things you got to do, put it in your brain like that. Like, I got to do this. I don't have no choice. So, you know, and like, literally, I never talked about this part, but when I was at the lake and um, winter time was starting to come, people, everybody was like, what you going to do? What you going to do? You know? I didn't know, but I was like, I'm still going to be outside with it. So what I did is, you know, this is a little formula I'm going to give it away. But giving away some free game, y'all. Yeah, but it's like, Say that. what I did was I made a list of barbershops and salons. Get it fucked up. This is before COVID, too. Mm -hmm. I made a list of barbershops and salons from from, from Antioch to San Francisco. Uh -huh. Like, literally. Because I, I st it started to, when you do stuff like that, you start to see how big the market really is. Bro. Like, like, it's, it's no reason to feel like so many houses, so many businesses, so many, every, it's people everywhere. What, what you suggest, what you're talking about is suggesting, I've already did it before because I used to be an artist, mm -hmm. and um, we were pressing up physical copies of the CDs, you know what I mean? And I had to go cultivate relationships with the, with the owners, even at the end, um, so, so. We, we're getting a little short on time, but that's yes, real. man, that's, that's what real. you gotta do. Got it. Um, it's, man, I'm, I'm proud of you, bro. You hey, know what I mean? Hey, hey. And here's the thing the product is fire. <laughs> Quit playing. He's on par with all of the big brands, but guess what? It's all natural. The reason that some of these big brands can make stuff taste so good. They whipping up something peculiar for your butt to keep you coming back, yeah. right? So it's going to taste like, might taste like crack. <laughs> and the only reason that I use that, because that's synonymous with addiction. Right. And so if you're wondering why you eating something, you won't be drinking, a, uh, you won't be drinking um, Zeminade and then have to go to a program in six months. Yeah. If you drink a Zeminade, you're going to get whatever the, uh, the vitamins right. that come with the with the blueberries, yeah. 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 and then what, what kind of water you use? Al Hammer. <laughs> shout out to Al Hammer, his partner. In, in, yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yo, what's up? It's DJ Tussie. Salute the DJs. You already know where I'm at, man. It's the Wayne Hayes Show, baby. Let's rock. Zemine, uh, an influential beverage that's taking the Bay Area and, and more by storm. He's a young black man, a king. And you just we just listened to his song. What was the name of that joint again? I found. I found. And I ain't gonna lie, it caught me a little bit by surprise. It, it caught me off guard. You know what I'm saying? Um, you have a wonderful spirit, but not but you have a wonderful spirit and your spirit. So I'm like, well, it might be a little hyphy. You know what I'm saying? It might look yeah. like whatever you think because you got that energy, you yeah, don't have no sleepy yeah. ass lazy energy, yeah, right? For sure. And it was it was hypey, but it was it was neo soul music, and you were singing, and you it was a vibe. Yeah. 
Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. So we get hyphy too, though, man. <laughs> you know what it is? <laughs> Yeah, I appreciate really it, man. So listen, man, it's the kind of music that I fool with. Um, you know, I work with talent and I manage a few artists, so I think that's dope music. I think you have a lot of potential. And so can we expect more music from you? Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. I'm I gotta, you know, I'm getting this M and A worked out to where I can get it running as a machine. Yeah. But I'm definitely gonna get my foot back in the music. Right now, I've been more so on the back end doing like production, like putting. I got certain artists that I work with. Putting plays together. Yeah, putting plays together. And our uh, a lightweight executive producer, our producer. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So that's where I've been at right now, but I'm going to drop my own music too, for sure. All right, cool, man. Well, get the people, uh, let the people know where they can find you. Oh, man, you already know the IG is Zeminade underscore, you feel me? Or you can follow me it's, uh, at Zemiran, that's Z-E-M-Y-R-A-N. And you already know who it is. It's your boy Zemiran with the Zemiran. 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 Give it up for Zemiran one more time. And that Zemiran brand. Zemiran. Now, Mama, have you some here. Me and Nico are on today. Yeah. Me and Nico are we on today. Yes, sir. We, we're coming back with a with a... With our underground artist, uh, I say underground because he's emerging and he's gonna take y'all. <laughs> yes, sir. We'll be back in a minute with Groovy Chew. And I wanna shout out my guy, my, my production lead, the guy that makes sure everything is all right when I'm in front of the camera. That's my man. Say that, man. Say that. <laughs> we'll be back in a minute with Groovy Chew.